money has been flowing into Georgia for these runoff elections, and they both now stand as the two most expensive Senate races in U.S. history. Democrat John Ossoff holds the record for the most raised by a single candidate with more than $138 million. That's according to OpenSecrets.org. In second place for that, though, Jamie Harrison, the Democratic challenger who failed to unseat South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham in November. And since then, Harrison has been busy fundraising in Georgia, trying to help both Democrats win today's elections. And he is up dark and early joining me now. Jamie Harrison, thank you so much uh, for joining us on this day, because I know it's a big and busy day for you. Listen, you know all too well that, you know, big fundraising does not necessarily lead to an electoral win. I'm curious what you you have learned from your own experience. Tell me about your fundraising operation for Georgia and how are you how is this money being used? Do you think to make a difference? Yeah. Well, and this is one of the things. Uh, well, good morning to you first of all. One of the things you also mm-hmm. have to understand that this is this is not not some isolation chamber. You know, I, I know a lot of folks like to concentrate on how much uh, John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock have raised. But let me tell you, the Republicans are raising just as much, if not more, particularly through some of the super PACs. We saw that here in South Carolina, where Mitch McConnell put almost $30 million in the last few weeks of this campaign to actually outspend us on behalf of Lindsey Graham. And we've seen the same thing in Georgia. And so uh, it, it's important to have the resources so that you can build a grassroots operation. But we know that uh, the Democrats are, are, are walking up a, a, a hill right now. Uh, runoff elections are much more difficult to win. But John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock have done something amazing. They've put together a grassroots operation that's been focused uh, on health care and justice uh, for all of the people in uh, in Georgia. And that's what's really important right now. Uh, you know, again, they need to have the resources. And so I, I've done all that I can in order to help with that. We've raised uh, almost a million dollars to benefit uh, the two candidates, uh, the Georgia Democratic Party, and some of the third party groups that are on the ground uh, doing the work to get the vote out. And that's really, really important. But today is game day. And uh, the most important thing that they can do is to get people to the polls. The polls are, are already open, open 7 a.m. this morning. They close at 7 p.m. today. People, if you're in Georgia, go to vote. Go to IWillVote.com and go and vote for change and dignity uh, and bringing that back to the United States Senate. You know, leading up to November, polls and and certainly fundraising numbers suggested that Democrats would have had a good chance of taking back the uh, Senate majority. They only gained one seat so far. Um, Why do you suppose Democrats were not more successful? Well, I think part of it is that we didn't expect the turnout that we saw uh, uh, for Donald Trump. I mean, I I can tell you, you can take my race, for example. You know, I was beating Lindsey Graham going into uh, uh, the early vote. We had record early vote in South Carolina, 2 million voters. I had 150,000 vote lead going into uh, Election Day. But Lindsey Graham ended up winning by over 200,000 votes. And look at the number that I, I, I got, 1 million votes, 1.1 million votes. Give you context, Donald Trump got 1.15 million votes, beating Hillary Clinton by 14 points in 2016. So I was only 50,000 short of the total that Trump got in South Carolina in 2016. And I, we had unprecedented turnout, and he was able to drive that. But this is the benefit that John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock have right now. Donald Trump is not on the ballot. You only have Kelly hmm. Leffler and David Perdue, uh, the Bonnie and Clyde of the United States Senate, who only care about their, their own stock portfolios and not the livelihoods of the people of Georgia. And that is the advantage that they have. They also have the advantage of having the amazing Stacey Abrams, uh, L- Latasha Brown, folks who are on the ground who know how to get the vote out. And so uh, I believe that we have an opportunity here to to really pull the rabbit out of the hat and to actually put some decent folks, uh, some folks who will fight for the people of Georgia in the United States Senate. 
Um, so, you know, your PAC is certainly helping Democrats usher in what you're sort of calling a, a new South. Um, for the Democratic Party, this is a long game. This is certainly a crucial, uh, crucial runoff elections that are happening now, but it's about more than that. It's about um, winning the South over again to the Democratic Party. What do you think the strategy is for that? Yeah, well, it, it is a long-term strategy. You know, for those folks who believe that you could just go into a state and throw some money, and then all of a sudden, you know, South Carolina is different, and or North Carolina is different, or Georgia is different. Uh, those people are living in in La La Land. It, 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 you know, it took longer to build Rome uh, than one day. It's going to take longer to flip South Carolina and transform Georgia and and, and transform Mis Mississippi than one election cycle. We have to have a long-term commitment to rebuilding the infrastructure of the state parties in these areas, to recruiting and training new candidates, uh, to making sure that we are registering new voters and engaging those voters, educating them on why it's important to vote and why Democrats, uh, it's important for them to, to support Democratic uh, uh, candidates. That's going to take a long time in order to do that. It's going to take a few cycles to get that done, but we see the potential. We see... What, what has happened in Virginia. We see the transformation that has already happened in, in Georgia. We just have to be committed to doing that. And that's what Dirt Road Pack's all about. Uh, it, I, my hope is that's what the commitment we will continue to see with the DNC. Those are important things that we have to do. That's what the Republicans did in order to flip the South. It was a long-term investment. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what Democrats are going to have to do in order to flip the South back, to bring this new South into reality. So, listen, Jamie Harrison, i got to ask you before you go, you are the Democratic National Committee Associate Chairman, and there's discussions that, you know, perhaps you could head the party. Is that something that you would be considering and interested in doing? Well, you know, I've been very clear. I would be very interested in it. In the end of the day, if uh, President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect uh, Harris call me and ask me uh, to, to serve as a leader of the DNC, I would be happily, I would happily uh, accept that invitation because I believe in our party. I believe in our values. We see the contrast right now. Uh, you know, saying that we believe in the Constitution isn't just words. It's, it's what, what we do in our actions. On the other side, we see Republicans. We see Kelly Leffler and David Perdue who, who wrap themselves in the flag but it seems as though that they've never read the Constitution of the United States. Because if they did, they wouldn't support the, the, the uh, undemocratic, un-American actions that we see in this presidency right now. Things will change on January 20th. We will build back better and we will bring decency and honor back to the White House. Uh, Jamie Harrison, thanks for joining us so early. Many have said this is going to be a very long day and night, so I expect you will be up for a very long time, so I appreciate it. Thank you so much.